This is going to be a rough one, guys. Hey, Miss Plain Jane here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, as everyone knows, October is full of a lot of awareness this month. It is the month of breast cancer awareness, um, infancy loss awareness, mental health awareness, SIDS awareness. There's so many health awarenesses in this month. But the main thing I'm going to talk about today is um, our mental health and our mental health being health me being a mom um, after pregnancy, experiencing pregnancy loss. Um, and postpartum you know how are we dealing with it what did I do when I didn't even know I had it and I and I had it you know um, it's very important that we talk about it so let's get into it I have mentioned many times that I was pregnant oh, 2018 I want to say my husband we're pregnant with our first child it was a boy and we lost him at 22 weeks and it was my first pregnancy but my first loss at the same time and I've dealt with loss in my life but losing a child your first child is Undescribable. I've never experienced a feeling like that before, ever, in all my 30 years of life. So, um, I was very, very, very difficult to endure, and I was overseas with my husband. We had a nickname for him. We didn't pick out a name, but we had a nickname for him. His name was Kimchi because he was gonna be born in Korea. And um, we had a web page on Facebook for him. Uh, we had a registry for him, his nursery, everything we thought we had for him. And the experience that I had losing him You just are never prepared enough for that. I actually had a dream prior to the incident of me losing him and I was so afraid and I've, I've read and I've heard that a lot of um, pregnant women they have vivid dreams and sometimes they are scary and I know even my sister she said she had a dream that she was gonna lose uh, my niece but she said it was just a dream and healthy as she can ever be but it was something about this dream that I had and I knew I knew that it wasn't just a regular dream so um, one morning I was going to wash clothes and I remember bending down to put the clothes in the dryer and as I lifted up to put the clothes in the dryer, I felt liquid come out, just squirt out. And I ran to the bathroom, I ran to the bathroom, and I ran into the shower, and liquid just came out, and it, it, it wouldn't stop. It just kept coming and coming and coming. And it didn't smell like pee, it smelled like, kind of like bleach water. I know it sounds weird, but it smelled like bleach water. and it just came out and came out and came out and in my mind I'm like googling like okay is this normal and you know they're saying like if it stops it's normal what if it keeps coming it's not and by that time my husband was like come on let's go to the ER so the the closest one was um, good morning but they have a specific time when they see pregnant women so the next one was Don Cook by the time we got to Don Cook 
mind you, I am in the car with a towel underneath me and I'm wrapped up in a towel to stop this liquid from coming out. And we got to Don Cook and they're doing the ultrasound and the nurse tells me, or the doctor tells me that um, there's no more amniotic fluid left to save my child. And at that time, I am on the verge of tears and my husband's like well isn't there anything else that we can do is there you know more than like somebody can call like you know a procedure something and she said no she said if there's no amniotic fluid then your baby can't survive so we end up calling um the camp Humphreys hotline you know or the the nurses hotline on Camp Humphreys and I tell them what's going on and I feel like it was inadequate help for me because as I'm asking her I'm like what do we do we're at you know a host nation hospital they're telling us that they can't save our baby you know is there anything else that we can do can we come back over there um, and she's just saying no if there's no MIA food then you know your baby won't be saved or that's it and the way she said it was just like you know I'm traumatized right now and that's all she could do the doctor comes back in and she tells us well to not risk infection we're going to basically have to induce your labor and basically have my baby come out it's this pill to induce labor it was the worst feeling ever I ended up having chills I ended up having um cramps which turned into contractions it was just the worst feeling ever i had fever and all of that just to induce labor there was there were no drugs to uh, manage my pain i was just going to push my baby out and when i pushed my baby out i didn't get to hold him um i think tupon saw him and i saw him but it was really really brief it was just this little tiny thing and that was it so after that I did not want to talk to anyone I didn't want to I I, I just I didn't even want to be in my own body like I it was just very very difficult for me to fathom I never I'm always a strong person I was always a strong person even when my mom passed away but this knocked me out. This knocked me to my knees. I was crying all the time and you just you just never forget. You never forget that feeling. You never forget that feeling. You know, and at one point I blamed myself because I should have known, you know, I should have known that my amniotic fluid was leaking. I should have known that, you know, when there was a lot of liquid at one point that that wasn't regular liquid that was amniotic fluid i should have known but there's no way of knowing these things happen they just happen you know my my case was um pre-rupture of membrane so they call it prom there's no way around grieving you know i grieve i grieve every day for my son till this day you know i'm thankful for my daughter but i grieve every day for my son and I think about him every day or what he could have been. I share that just to say, to say this, that one of my biggest things that I realized when I was in, in Korea dealing with that was I needed a support system and I needed somebody to talk to. I am not the best at communicating what I need emotionally and I'm not the best at showing my emotions especially when um, I'm going through something ask my husband <laughs> I'm not I'm really not and at that time I, I could feel myself going down a really dark path mentally I was I felt like I was just fading away I at one point I just wanted to go be with my son I just wanted to, I just didn't want to be. That was the most 
difficult time in my life. I will say that after um, some time, my husband, he was my rock. He was a great, great support system for me. He actually helped me out a lot like in the house and just trying to talk to me and you know, making me look at the brighter side of things. And I also have, have my faith, so that helped me too. And I had to, it was kind of like I had to pull myself out of this dark path that I was, I knew I, I don't need to be in, that I was heading in. And it was like clawing my way out of my own mind. It really was clawing my way out of my own mind because I knew I, I, I didn't need to be in this gloomy place. I needed to talk to someone. I needed my family. I needed my friends. And me cutting them off wasn't the right way. And there is no wrong or right way. But me cutting them off wasn't right for me. It wasn't right for me. And I, I, needed, I needed people around me so I can just stay out of my own mind. So I will say that having someone to talk to, even if it's writing something down or communicating in a journal, letting your thoughts out of your head will give your head and mind space to actually breathe something new and breathe something positive. So you're not always thinking negative to put you in a, in a place where you know, you're in self-harm or you know, you're depressed. So I would say communicating is the biggest thing to help in postpartum. But I share that pregnancy loss with you guys for all the moms out there that have experienced loss and have experienced more than one loss. You know, I just had one, you know, and there are other women that experience this, experience this thing more than once but it happens and you're not alone and you're not by yourself there are all these tools that are out there to help us there are all these wonderful wonderful people around you that if you actually ask them they will listen you never know what somebody's going through so don't dismiss how they're acting or reacting to something because you don't know and I feel like a lot of times we do dismiss a lot of uh, communications or miscommunications that we have with people because we either A, think it's normal or B, it offends us and we're in our own, in our own feelings and we're too selfish to understand that this person is crying out for help or we're too selfish to understand that this person is, is going through something far than, beyond whatever we can imagine you know and they need us they need us so don't ever dismiss someone when they come to you for help because you never know what's going on with that person and check on your strong friend check on them so that was my infancy loss story now my second pregnancy postpartum uh that one was rough as well because my biggest thing like i said was being away from family I did not have my mom, my grandmother, my family. My mom passed away in October, and then I lost my grandmother um, December of last year. So it it's been rough. It's been a rough couple of months and a couple of years actually. And dealing with not having them around, it kind of kicked my postpartum in gear as far as always, I guess, reminded me of I'm always by myself. You're always alone. You're always alone when you're going to do something. You know, you had this baby by yourself. Nobody's going to be here to help you. You have to do this by yourself. You are alone and you need to put your big girl panties on and do this by yourself. And it just made me so angry. I was so upset. I was so angry because I felt I felt like their other people have their moms and their grandmas to help them when the baby's crying um, the, the grandma will come in and oh no that's okay baby I got her I got him and you can just get your sleep 
I did not have any of that. <laughs> I had a husband that had to go to work in like a couple of days. And even when he was, was off and he had his uh, paternity leave, I still had to feed my baby because he was sleeping. So it, I was angry. I was angry. I was upset. Um, I was upset at the fact that I felt like I had to do it by myself. I was upset at the fact that my mom wasn't here. I was upset that I was upset that my grandmother wasn't here. I was mad because I'm in a, a faraway country. I was mad because of the pandemic. I was mad for a lot of reasons and that anger turned into depression. That anger turned into a lot of things. I had to remind myself that even though I feel this way, I I went off went through all of that to gain the biggest blessing of all, which is my baby girl. You know? But at the end of the day, I don't think I should feel shamed in how I felt. I don't think people should shame other people for experiencing postpartum because most people don't even know that they're going through postpartum you know and it's okay it's okay to be angry it's okay to feel upset it's okay to feel sad it's okay because your body has gone through the most traumatic thing it's ever gone through and that's giving birth you know that's giving birth so my thing that I that helped me out the most was talking to my husband, talking to my support system in South Korea, and it just and looking at this little girl's face, <laughs> it just reminded me that I didn't go through all of what I went through, you know, for nothing, and I'm not the only one that has gone through something like this. And you're not the only one that has gone through something like this. And it's gonna be okay. You'll never forget what you've lost. But at the same time, you'll always cherish what you've gained. And I remind myself of that every day. Every day, when I look at her, every day. For all the moms out there that has experienced loss, that has, you know, gone through emotional battles and downhills and uphills with postpartum this is for you guys to let you know that I'm like you and you're not by yourself you're not going crazy <laughs> you are going through something that is a part of the birthing process all right relax after the storm mm -hmm. Like I said, if you have any questions, if you want to know more of my experience with postpartum, um, my infancy loss, comment down below. Um, if you like this video, like and subscribe. But other than that, just know that I'm here for you. Malia's here for you. We're all here for you. And don't be afraid to reach out and communicate to someone on what you're feeling and how you're feeling because your mental health is important. You matter and your mind is the most valuable asset to your being that there is so protect it yes girl protect your mind girl protect your mind that's the beauty mm. stay safe out there guys love you bye